Perfect. Okay, well, hi everybody. Welcome to the sixth installment of Higher Awards Speaker Series. And before kicking off with our amazing conversation today, we just wanted to briefly introduce Higher Awards and our guest speakers. So Higher Awards is a startup based in Silicon Valley that gives community-based organizations the ability to provide members with a credit card branded with the organization's logo. Essentially, each time members use the card, they support the organization financially because 2% of the members' daily transactions goes directly to the organization. My name is Shrijoni, I go by Shri, and I'm a business intern for Higher Awards this summer. Um, yeah. My name is Mihir Nair, and I'm also a business intern along with Shri at Higher Awards. Uh, along with Sri, both of us will be co-hosts for this conversation. And last but not least, we'd love to extend a warm welcome to both of our speakers today, Kaylee and Serena. Um, and last but not least, uh, feel free to drop your questions uh, in our Zoom chat or on our Facebook Live page. Uh, and at the end, we'll have a short question and answer session with our guest speakers today. Perfect. Um, just to start off, first of all, welcome Serena and Kaylee. Um, Higher Awards is all about like empowering those who've been like dedicating themselves to others and like um, spreading very like important information in their community. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about your background and the inspiration for your work with Jail for Melanin? Yeah. So um I think the both of us have always had a general interest in social justice related issues and particularly the intersection of racial and gender issues. Um, and actually we met in high school and previously um, we were working on um, a club that was promoting intersectional feminism and starting conversations around that. So that is kind of where we started um, our journey in terms of social justice. And then particularly for Jail for Melanin, do you want to speak more? Sure. So, um, yeah, we've both always been interested in social justice. And I think um, in the wake of kind of an uprising and an important movement in regards to Black Lives Matter, um, and, but just kind of in general, um, I think it, this has been an awakening for a lot of people in terms of politics and in terms of social issues. So while we're addressing the important issue of police brutality, Kaylee and I thought it would also be important to address an issue that both fuels and stems from it, which is the mass incarceration epidemic. And um, we felt passionate about that um, after kind of learning about it ourselves through documentaries like 13th, which is an amazing documentary on Netflix by Ava DuVernay um, and Just Mercy, which has been gaining a lot of traction as well. Um, and we thought that this was an issue that all people know about, or I don't think they know the depth of um, the problem that it is in our country today. Um, and we wanted to provide a resource for people to really understand the issue in an accessible way and to be able to kind of take action. To, we wanted to serve as a one stop for them to learn about the issue, then take action and feel empowered to make change themselves. Yeah, it's really honestly incredible to hear that young college students, the next generation is taking a lot of action and providing resources to the entire world to kind of learn more about what the Black Lives Matter movement stands for and why in particular mass incarceration is such a prevalent issue when we think about racism in the modern day. So thank you for sharing that. And you know, in your mission statement, you strive to provide this educational resource for people to learn about mass incarceration. So can you speak more to why you believe so strongly that mass incarceration is, as you just said, an epidemic and um, also why um, America's prison industrial complex is you know, this disease that needs to be cured. Mm -hmm. So I think, so our use of the language is meant to kind of emphasize the scope of the issue and the impact of that it has on the people. Um, and one thing we really wanna bring up is that although the US only has 5% of the population of the world, they're responsible for 25% of the prison population of the world and that is really important in looking at the way that individuals are impacted, but also when you think about the way that this issue is transgenerational um, in the way that it doesn't just affect people, but the people around them, whether it's their kids, their relatives, and it's an issue that affects um, 
a very big scope and we just wanted to use that language to really emphasize that. Exactly and when we say epidemic we mean epidemic because the U.S. is imprisoning people at a higher rate than pretty much any other country in the world despite you know our trademark as being the land of the free and this is problematic in, in many ways, and one of them is that it disproportionately hurts people of color and marginalized groups. Um, two out of three black men who live in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C., can expect to be incarcerated by current standards. Uh, Latinx and black men are six to 12 times more likely to be incarcerated than their white counterparts. Native women are six times more likely to be incarcerated um, than white women or other women. And in general, people from marginalized backgrounds um, are being targeted and criminalized in the eyes of law enforcement and are way over, overrepresented in the criminal justice system, which then reaps more problems. When they come out of jail, they can't get a job, they can't get welfare benefits, um, they have a hard time reintegrating into society, and if they were in prison for a uh, substance abuse or an alcohol problem, which is what many of these people are in prison for, nonviolent drug offenses or alcohol offenses, then they're still their mental health problem is not fixed. Um, and yet we're incarcerating all these people um, who are being subject to abuse in prisons, who are suffering from mental health issues, and who are coming from low-income backgrounds and underrepresented backgrounds. Yeah, thank you so much for like sharing that with us. And as you were saying, like these are like alarming statistics about prison population. And um, they're like really telling of like why your work is so important, especially given like the current circumstances and the past few months. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I was just wondering like as the current co-founders of Jail for Melanin, how has your experience like been shaped by the current unprecedented public health climate due to the COVID due to COVID nineteen? Because I know that it's like a lot of things are going on at like the same time, so it's kind of like hard to um, keep track of like what like what to do and like what like where to go forward with um so like in particular like how is jail for melanin still working to foster community spirit during these challenging times um i think one important thing to address is that they in a way they are very connected issues if you're looking at the way that covid19 affects prisons and the people who are in them that's a very important issue and therefore i think that these issues aren't that different and so we're hoping to use the media attention um, towards both the issues of like the discrimination towards people of color and also the um, pandemic to draw attention to mass incarceration yeah absolutely and i think this is this was an opportunity um, because during COVID-19, I think people are paying attention to the news more. They're reading more and they're more aware and kind of we're trying to size that moment in order to teach people um, about an issue that some people know about but don't, don't know a ton about. Um, and in terms of fostering community, um, we do outreach on social media. We have kind of several ways that you can actually interact with the interface and get involved. So in addition to having history, timelines, statistics, we have send an email to your representatives. All you have to do is, is click on this template and send it now. We have, um, these are some events you can go to and talk to other people about this. We have, these are ways you can sign a petition. These are ways you can divest from the industrial complex. Here's where you can join the discussion. And then we have um, an email list where we're constantly having those discussions. So um, we think that virtually there's many ways to connect people. And even more now, perhaps than ever, we have the privilege of being able to connect people across a wide scope of areas, maybe even more than we would during the pandemic. Yeah, thank you for sharing that insightful response. It's really great to hear that there's so many outlets that Jill for Melanin is providing for anyone, you know, to take action, whether it's a short term action by, you know, sending a letter to your representative in Congress or signing a petition to more of a sustainable action that you take, such as, you know, um, moving away from companies, for instance, that work with Alec, you know, and Alec is like one of the really, um, mm -hmm. You know, they're a very controversial organization and obviously they're mentioned quite heavily in the movie 13th, which you alluded to before, as, you know, supporting this idea of a capitalistic prison system where, you know, the beds in prison need to be filled in America. So I think the way that you're going about this is really, really helpful. And I think especially now um, with the Black Lives Matter movement, we've seen the rise in use of social media. So I think that with our generation, whether it's like TikTok or Instagram, we're seeing lots of, um, you know, different movements going on on social media uh, to combat hatred in any form. 
So thank you again for sharing that. And, you know, just touching on this, um, you talked about like how you're fostering community through your outreach. So can you elaborate um, on kind of the future um, and your future goals for outreach and how you want to ensure that this Black Lives Matter movement does not die down? And in particular, you know, as a newer nonprofit, um, what are your future goals for Jail to Melanin? Yeah, so we're, as you said, we're definitely very new. And one thing that we definitely look forward to doing is partnering with a lot of other nonprofits um, and looking at using that as um, an area for us to grow and to learn from these nonprofits, but also to look at um, the parts where we have similar values and maybe similar issues that we're trying to advocate for. Um, and we're also looking into the possibility of partnering with smaller businesses. Um, in that area, we're looking at maybe creating some sort of product that would allow us to generate money to donate to these organizations that we're advocating for. Um, one of the pages we have on our website is a few organizations that we would like to promote. Um, so if we could find some way in order for us to help um, drive that donation, we would really love to do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, and in terms of our future, we're excited about a lot of things. One page on our website is dedicated to like, telling people about their rights and particularly targeted towards marginalized people and saying, look, these are your rights in the criminal justice process. This, these are ways that historically people of color or other marginalized groups um, are being discriminated against or being um, kind of taken advantage of by the system. So we have, these are some legal resources you can have. These are some um, local resources in your state or in your county. And that's a, a big part of our website. And I think we'd love to continue to expand that and figure out a way that we can serve as a medium between people and getting the help they need. And in addition, like Kaylee said, um, like the Equal Justice Initiative and the Innocence Project and all those organizations, we'd love to help them financially, but also um, kind of serving as a, as a website where we connect people with, with those causes so that they can learn more about them um, and get the help that they need in addition to so there's kind of the activism side and then there's the we want to help you side and we hope to kind of foster both and, and grow both. Yeah, and like Serena said, I, I think a big part of our website is that we want it to be a starting place. And so it's a place to learn, a place to take action and a place to do more. And we really, we've linked so many resources in terms of podcasts, books, movies, like places to look for more information. So although we have spent this time in like compiling a lot of information, we really do want it to be a starting place for mm -hmm. this conversation. And we don't want it to end just like when you click off the website. Um, we want it to reflect in your actions and beyond. Yeah, definitely. I think it's so great to hear how your nonprofit um, is not only like doing something for um, like this cause, but is also like connecting a bunch of other nonprofits and like shining light on what they're doing. And um, yeah, it's great like how you guys want to like partner with um, other nonprofits and other organizations at the moment. And um, I think like for me, it, like when I like browsed your website, it was amazing like just how like rich it is and like all the information that it provides. And it's great to like see how you're like providing an educational resource for um, marginalized minorities. And as you mentioned, like donations are like a very key way. Like I know when like a few weeks ago, I like personally donated to like a bunch of organizations and like that's one of the ways to like financially support this cause. And um, just to like go off of that, like we just wanted to let you know that here at Higher Wards, we are also all about financially empowering nonprofits. Because like, as you mentioned, it's like important to continue supporting the social impact of um, organizations like such as yours and um, the other like like countless organizations that are like trying to shine light on this cause. Um, just to, like give you like a little bit of a background, Higher Wars basically strives to embody a similar value in which we work to make giving and contributions easier for organizations who dedicate themselves to others, so basically yours. And um, we make passive, passive contributions and gifts much easier. And I feel like this is so important for this movement because it is so important to like continuously um, financially empower like organizations such as these. Um, I was just wondering like, can you speak more to how um, you initially funded the launch of your nonprofit and how you plan to sustainably finance like your amazing work in the future? Because I like, I'm not really sure, but I'm assuming that there must be like some cost to like going forward with like such an amazing like nonprofit like yours. 
Yeah, there are. I think we started with kind of reaching out to the support of our network um, and people that we knew were already passionate about this issue. Um, and kind of, um, Kaylee will talk a little bit more about this, but people who are also, you know, working towards change right now and who wanted to get involved and help us. Um, but I think moving forward, um, something we're really excited about is um, getting help from and get support from, from people who are new to the issue and who are newly passionate um, because of the website and to have, you know, who are like, what can I do? How can I help? And who can kind of empower us to um, reach some of our goals, like starting a mentorship program and teaching people how to go into their communities and work on grassroots activism um, and teach people in their community, you host a film screening, host a discussion. Um, we'd also love to, um, you know, expand our organization end up in more areas, host more events, more discussions, and kind of get more on the ground in, in that respect. And then I think because we are online, we have the advantage of not necessarily having to put money into, like, for example, if it were an event to have a venue and like catering and whatever else is involved there. Mm -hmm. um, and because of that, I think most of what we put into it so far is mostly time. Um, and mm -hmm. as Serena previously alluded to, we did reach into our networks and um, a friend of ours was, who's very passionate about graphic design was actually um, offering to make logos for people and then using the money from that to donate um, to different organizations that support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and so we definitely took advantage of that opportunity and that's how our logo was created. Um, and we'd love to work with anyone else who um, really, I think, has values that align with those of our nonprofit and our work. Um, and that's kind of how we're looking to um, move forward in that sense. Wow, I'm honestly blown away from everything you've said today. I think in particular, it's really rewarding to hear that two young college students are reaching out to their own networks, they're expanding, they're looking to grow their nonprofit, and they're looking to continue such an important conversation in America they're really looking to continue that conversation and move the trajectory forward. So once again, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap it up here and transition to our question and answer session, uh, but we just wanna thank both of you uh, for coming on and having such an enriching conversation. Uh, we really appreciated you discussing your work, especially you know, in the wake of the recent movements across the United States fighting for racial justice. Here at Higher Awards, we strive to constantly have more of these open dialogues, whether it's about racial injustice or any type of injustice or discrimination across the world. And we are always striving for ways to uplift others. And yeah, just once again, we want to extend a huge thank you. Uh, so now we'll be going into our question and answer session. If you have a question, I'll just ask that you use the hand raising button on Zoom and we will call on you to ask Serena and Kaylee your question. All right, so it looks like we have Jacob Kipp raising his hand. So Jacob, why don't you come online and ask your question? Uh, first off, I do like your logo, actually. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you guys had any more um, uh, information or resources around investing in the, uh, the ethical alternative companies uh, that I saw on your website. And then I'll, I'll give you a two-parter. Um, uh, I know you're, you know, somewhat of a newer nonprofit, but any messages uh, of hope or success story that uh, you could share with us uh, around the work that you've already been doing? Yeah, for sure. So, and the first question, the ethical alternatives questions, that was a that was a part of the website we spent a lot of research on because. Um, honestly, now it's it's really hard to know <laughs> which um, parts of corporate America are contributing to an unethical cause, um, and so we we kind of started with the which are the companies that are blatantly supporting the prison industrial complex and kind of looking at the effects of that. Like in one, you know, Victoria's Secret workers were finding labels that were made in China by. Um, workers and changing them to say made in America, or they had a person working in their um, prison who then got out of prison and applied for a job. And they were like, no, you were in prison. You don't, you can't have this job, even though they literally had the job in prison. Um, so we started there and then kind of looked for companies that had similar, um, did similar uh, services or um, products and 
um, offer kind of a diverse, uh, wholesome or ethical perspective and support ethical causes. So it, we are currently working on expanding that and um, kind of helping people figure out direct ways that they can um, support ethical causes. Uh, the first most obvious one is divest from the ones that are contributing to prison right. industrial complex or a part of our site that we're building is where you can send a message to the, um, co the company and say, please divest from this or we won't be supporting your company and we're working for a way for you to can directly support the ethical alternatives. Um, but other than that, um, activism surrounding this and really getting on the internet, getting on Twitter where all these companies are as well and saying to these companies like, please divest from this, you know, I'll be supporting X cause, maybe, you know, I'm going to in and out and send a McDonald's today because, you know, if enough people do that, um, we, we think this is a time where people are really willing to change. Yeah, and I think to go off of that point, like there really is a power in numbers and a power in voices and what you choose to do with your money. And so in that part of the website, we were really trying to emphasize that point. Um, and to your later question about um, what kind of message we're trying to put out there, I think through what we're working on now and also our previous projects, we've always had like a common message of encouraging people to be advocates, um, whether that is for this specific issue or other issues that you believe in. Um, we think it's really important to make sure your voice and your opinions are heard um, and mm -hmm. advocating for what you believe in in um, different aspects of your everyday life. Yeah, and also I was just thinking about like a lot of the companies we have on our website, we say if they currently use prison labor if they have in the past, but several have have divested from the prison industrial complex because of public pressure. And there's no reason that the rest of the ones on our list can't do the same if if we just bring awareness to the issue and and pretty much tell the company like you're gonna lose a lot of support because people are paying attention to you and what you're doing. I think it's a really interesting perspective and uh, you know as, as an investor myself I I find it to be incredibly uh, valuable. So Great job with that. Thank you. thank you. Yeah, thank you for such an insight, especially with how we're spending our money. I think it's really important in this day and age to recognize which, which are the ethical brands out there, um, especially the larger corporations where you may buy from, like such as, you know, you mentioned In-N-Out versus McDonald's, thinking about that and how it makes an impact. Um, I think that's super important, especially for the next generation. So thank you. Uh, we have another question from Amar Ansari. So Amar, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and come on and ask your question live. Hi. Um, first off, um, thank you for um, coming on the call and like sharing about this wonderful or, um, organization and its mission. Um, I had a question and it was that how does Jail for Melanin um, seek to push for public policy? Because um, I know on the website there was a couple of proposed reforms. Mm -hmm. um, how does your organization seek to push for those policies to get passed? Yeah, great question. Well, the first, the, f the first aspect is we did research on policy and we said these are the policies that we want and then we're expanding our website to be, you can click on our, our template and you can send a message to your congresswoman or your senator saying we support this particular bill, this particular reform. Um, but working, f moving forward, we both kind of have backgrounds in policy and um, in government and like um, I've worked with my local congresswoman before, so we're hoping to also do um, um, work with um, with policymakers um, in advocating for our reforms and working with them to to author and partner with other organizations to, to author bills that will create um, criminal justice reform and also empowering people who use our website to come with us to lobby days uh, when they come back in person um, and to help us um, support and work with representatives. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark, for asking. Uh, are there any other questions? All right, well, seeing as there are none, we just want to extend one last great big thank you to Serena and Kaylee for coming on. It's so exciting in particular to hear about your future plans, because uh, as a newer nonprofit, you're obviously looking to expand. And it's great to hear how um, you're doing such great work with the current Black Lives Matter movement especially with mass incarceration and fighting for racial justice. Um, as we wrap up this installment of our speaker series, we encourage each and every one of you to continue supporting your local community and empowering those who are already dedicating themselves to others, such as Serena and Kaylee with their nonprofit, Jail for Melanin. Uh, if you wish to learn more about Jail for Melanin, uh, please visit their website at www.jailedformelanin.org or check out their Instagram page at Jail for Melanin.
Finally, Higher Rewards is all about sharing such inspirational stories as you've seen today. And if you wish to learn more about how we empower nonprofits, uh, please visit www.higherwards.org. So it's change from .com to .org. Um, and um, feel free to follow us on social media at Higher Rewards. We are sending each of you love, health, and happiness during these trying times. And we hope you have a nice weekend. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.